Hey, everybody. You can count on me to come through. Um, I don't want to be a lobby hero or anything, but as a Kennedy, whose name is on the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, a state I learned today has slipped out of Kamala's uh, lane, as it was said. Again, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I did pass through the Lion's Gate portal on 888, if you know, you know. And everybody knows. Thank you, Mark Ruffalo. It's a double play. Right? It's exactly what Billie Eilish... His mom said the other day, right, on that wonderful interview with the moms of Beyonce, Billy, Travis and the other Kelsey, and my beloved Selena Gomez. Our job on this planet as so-called humans is to reduce generational trauma. I made it in DC before I made it in New York and then I made it in LA, a town I haven't left, rather a county I haven't left in more than two years because I found the promised land here and everybody saw me find it. Everybody saw me find it. I am, in a way, also J.D. Salinger. Or is it Salinger? Who the fuck cares? It's Salinger, by the way, because... Um, an E after a G is going to make the G say the J sound. And that's actually the T, my friends. I have a very important week ahead of me teaching civics to um, a bunch of talented youngsters in Pasadena, a stone's throw from Einstein's Caltech home. And I don't know, people, my parents staged an intervention with me four years ago so everybody could give me cover so that I could get off crystal meth on the one hand and Ativan on the other. And today marks my three-year anniversary of crystal meth being out of my system. And the crazy thing is the last time I did crystal meth, I did it in Pasadena. which it occurs to me now. It was the setup like everything else in my life for so long now and it's true, it's been very hard for me. I am having it up a little bit here because I have that skill now. I do personally believe Kabbalah's heart and soul is in the right place. The problem is that our political system is completely broken. And it's true that if anybody can break bread with people across the aisle, it's me because I also did make it in Hollywood and I know Tony Hinchcliffe. (laughs) 
a lot of people know him, and I didn't know about him until I came out here. But I was taken in by the stand-up comedy community because I realized <laughs> that I had found my tribe. I didn't plan to go this far, but I hear the sirens. We are in a downward spiral of violence right now. It's no surprise that half this fucking country is at the other half of the country's throats. And this is where I did draw the line four years ago. You cannot make the kinds of statements that Kamala and Barack and Michelle and so on are making. Blue Anon is the right frame. These are incendiary conspiracy theories and outright paranoia coming from the Democrats in order to win an election through fear. It is simply not true. Thank God Jeff Bezos spiked that fucking endorsement. This country... The Union States of Israel, as I will continue to call it until Israel and the United States is no more, has no right to any kind of moral authority. Because just like Israel to the Palestinians is a terrorist state, the United States is a terrorist state to many people around the world. That's what I learned in my higher education. Thank you. I say again to my friend Kanye West, thank you. Don't be a bully. All I see is bullying. Two trains running. You hear the train in the distance? Hi, Angela. Hi, Courtney. Boys and Girls Club. Trump. Is not a neocon. He's a lot of things, but he's no neocon. That's why all the neocons have flocked to Kamala like flies on shit. And no, she is not the shit. And no, it is not racist for me to say that. Right? This is somebody who was the top attorney, top lawyer, top cop, whatever you want to say about her in her role as AG of California. This is somebody who was the top legal executive for a country that if it were apart from the United States, it is an independent country, would be an enormous country. I don't have the statistics off the top of my head. So my point is, she knows better. She should be doing better. <laughs> Picture her in the White House crossing things off her to-do list? That's her picture of what she would be doing in the Oval Office? She pictures she has a to-do list? That's her attempt at being relatable, right? Meanwhile, all she says, she goes on and on, she crows about it, right? That she eats no for breakfast. Then how come she can't firmly stand apart from Biden? I read it in Axios. Thank you, Mike Allen. What do they think that we're not reading? The problem is, is this country is addicted to war. And methamphetamine is a war drug.
So it's no surprise to me I say again that half this country is at the other half of the country's throats. However the fuck you want to say that grammatically, because this country is at war all over the place. Right? Again, I got to cut this short. I got to get out of here. I have some stuff to pick up at Target, headquartered in, wait for it, Brooklyn Park. Brooklyn, where I parked my car and Arthur parked his. Brooklyn, where Arthur was stopped by the NYPD. And I thought, wow, look, stop and frisk. Right? Right in front of my fucking eyes. My fucking part, right there. Right? Because in that part of Brooklyn and Flatbush, the NYPD sets up, wait for it, riot, right? They set up light torture devices, these lights, L-I-G-H-T-S, right? During certain parts of the year to dampen, that is to control crowds, right? When? When predominantly black and brown people want to express themselves. So that's what I don't get here. Right? Kamala can't have it both ways. The Obamas can't have it both ways. Right? You can't. And here's where I'm going to thank Naomi Klein for being a wonderful duet partner among many other people who... I've talked to or otherwise encountered over the course of my wonderfully gifted life, gifted by the above, whoever is above there. But yo, people, as I keep saying, we have a mass extinction crisis. There is a poly crisis right now. Everything is falling apart. And I know from things fall apart. We have to let go of war, and yet the economy of the United States of America, the economy of the Union States of Israel, is heavily dependent on spending for war, right? There'd be so many white workers out of work in this country if they were not employed as wait for it correctional officers in prisons that were built to warehouse predominantly black and brown, wait for it, unemployed workers, right? Go to my YouTube page, I invite you, right? If you're watching this on YouTube, you're watching it on my YouTube page. I am a master communicator. I've got the fucking herpes sore here to prove it. I love to kiss but I never tell my friends. I just tell on myself. And that's the point, right? I'd like to close this monologue. Thank you to my friends at CAA. Thank you to my friends at Harvard Westlake and at Harvard and at Yale and at Columbia. Then on page 22, my hair stood up, Paul says. Remember Holden Caulfield, the definitive, sensitive youth wearing his red hunter's cap? And on this note, Helen Mary can go fuck herself to use Kurt Cobain's name in vain like that. Why is Kurt Cobain her picture... Girlfriend, fuck you. You're done. You're canceled, girl. Not that that makes a difference anymore. A deer hunter hat. Like hell it is. I sort of closed one eye like I was taking aim at it. Thank you, Christina Sharp. This is a people shooting hat. I shoot people in this hat. Hmm. Paul says, thinking. This book, The Catcher in the Rye, is preparing people for bigger moments in their lives than I ever dreamed of. Then on page 89, thank you, Taylor. Talk about swift 
exchanges. I'd rather push a guy out the window or chop his head off with an axe and sock him in the jaw. I hate fist fights. What scares me most is the other, excuse me, Freudian, of course, I stutter like Biden genocide, Joe. Chopping block Kamala. She throws a mean guillotine in addition to fixing a mean fucking Bolognese. Who the fuck cares what Bolognese you makes, girlfriend? You can just get it at a restaurant. I finished the book. Excuse me, let me back up. What scares me most is the other guy's face. I finished the book. It's a touching story, comic, because the boy wants to do so much and can't do anything. Hates all phoniness and only lies to others. Wants everyone to like him, is only hateful, and is completely self-involved. In other words, a pretty accurate picture of a male adolescent. And what alarms me about that book, not the book so much as the aura about it, is this. The book is primarily about paralysis. The boy can't function. And at the end, before he can run away and start a new life, it starts to rain and he folds. Now, there's nothing wrong in writing about emotional and intellectual paralysis. This is just a second reading, by the way. I just keep it moving. Thank you, Dadlin. Thank you, Jamaica. Thank you, Jamaica. Thank you, Salty. Thank you to everyone who's believed in me all these years. From the beginning till now at midlife, it may indeed, thanks to Chekhov and Samuel Beckett, be the great modern theme, the extraordinary last lines of Waiting for Godot. Let's go. Yes, let's go. Stage directions, they do not move. What did I say about keeping it moving? A perfect setup for my final bit. Edward Said's birthday is coming up. The first text I ever taught as a teacher in higher education, I taught Edward Zaid's short text published in Granta in the 80s titled Reflections on Exile, in which he said, all the world is in exile. I'm in exile to all the world. I paraphrase. The point is, Zaid, a Palestinian, a lauded public intellectual who worked at Columbia University until his premature death, like so many people die, especially black and brown people in this fucking country of the Union States of America, let alone the world, prematurely. And again, I say, Kamala has no fucking health insurance policy plan just after we went through a catastrophic global health emergency, for shame, I say, a crying shame. All the world's in exile. That means no place is home. You've got to find your hospitality wherever you can find it, my friends. And I don't find any hospitality. I'm looking at my pretend audience. Because the fucking stand-up stage is no different from the bully pulpit, is no different from Broadway, is no different from the classroom, is no different from this goddamn room, a room of my own. That's all I ever wanted at 226 East 12th Street. It's like, Scott, why can't I just get a fucking door on the bedroom so I don't have to hear you fucking snore, my dude? 
so that I could sleep in in the morning and not be what, you know what I mean? All I wanted was a door. And said he gave me a closet. I was like, no, I'm actually trying to get out of the closet, my dude. Right, by coming clean about Christmas. Oh no, let me let me end it there, my people. Number one, the point is, as I just posted on X, aka Twitter, no nationalism, people. No nationalism. We have been moving past nationalism for centuries, and right now Michelle Obama wants to lecture unspecified young men about their rage. Wow, lady, you should lecture all the drivers here in LA. I know you get out here, but you're not a driver, my friend, right? Here's the real tea, people. The Obamas don't know anything more about society. They are not any more in touch with society than fucking the Kardashians are, okay? Thank you again to my comedians. Thank you, thank you, thank you, right? This bullshit, wicked shit, garbage. Same thing with fucking Kamala and the Obamas. These people are so out of touch. They have no clue what's going on, right? Fucking pretending to be joyful. Who has joy at this time? Donald Trump was subject to two assassination attempts already. Who has joy at this time? The only people who have joy at this time are people who have literally disconnected from reality. And that's fine, but you cannot win a presidential election on that basis. Why are people going to vote for Trump and put him back into office? For basic pocketbook issues, people, right? By every measure, and this is true, and again, I put this out there. Who would you rather believe, me or Kamala, Barack, and Michelle all put together, right? I found... The palace of kingdom here on earth, right? Arthur said to me from day one, I don't want to fight. It took me four years to lay down my sword so I could say this. And bear in mind, it's been three years since crystal meth has touched my system. Coda two. The 2016 presidential election, I myself was so disconnected from reality by what was going on in this country, the Union States of Israel, even back then. Remember, it was Hillary Clinton who called half the country a basket of deplorables. So when we see hate funded by groups working against so-called anti-Semitism, right? I want to say, whose hate are you talking about, number one? And number two, can we talk about the apartheid state of Israel, which has been imposing collective and punishment, a.k.a. the Dahia Doctrine, in the Middle East for the past, I don't know, 20-some years, 18 years, give or take two decades. Who's counting? I am. You can count on me. I don't want to be anybody's lobby hero. I fucking hate cops because I hate authority. Again, I say fuck you, Helen Mirren. I'm an actor too. Kurt Cobain shot his brains out because he couldn't take the contradictions of this world, the gap between word and deed. I couldn't take the contradictions in this world. Remember, I fucking interviewed Hillary Clinton right here in Hollywood. I mean, over there in Hollywood. Because I'm in Glendale, the Armenian quarter where I was made. because I've been here for three years too. My friends, funny how I kicked both my Ativan dependency and my crystal meth addiction while living here with such excellent structures of care in place. Again, I say, we should be reducing generational trauma 
not contributing to it and all i see is trauma 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 this is what i do now instead of instead of doing tea now I sing to express myself now, but let me make it art for you, my friends, in 2016. My partner, Scott, was a wall. I was doing crystal meth when Trump was elected. I was coming down from it on election day. I've never said these words out loud and yet I'm still here. Resilience is one of the foundations of the American character. And I, for one, am sick to death of this goddamn nanny state with these fucking nannies telling us how we should vote, how we should think, what drugs we should take. Funny, 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 funny how COVID is a chronic illness now, and there are ads for it during the World Series. Right, Arthur? Funny that marijuana, a.k.a. ganja, a long-standing spiritual medical practice of centuries and centuries and centuries and centuries remains outlawed on a federal level in this country. And there are people behind bars because of what? Fucking states' rights? Kamala fucking Harris? That's right. I'm reading you the riot act in the name of riot. I say stop. Put down your weapons. Elon Musk is right, actually. Jesus did live. What the fuck did Jesus preach? He preached non-violence, and he was fucking killed for it. It's 10.27. On 2020, I was also doing crystal meth. While Trump, excuse me, Biden was elected, and I was in Washington on Inauguration Day with my then boyfriend, Tony. We stopped at the Vietnam War Memorial. Everybody saw me do it. <laughs> this will be 33. I heard the door open. I'll shut up. I got to take a shower. And like I said, I got to make it to Target. Everybody saw me do it. Everybody saw me do it. And that's why I say, hey, my friend, to everyone I see, because nobody's a stranger to me. I am Paul. After all, my Hollywood friends, boy, oh boy, did they save me. Rest in peace. Matthew Perry, this world was not for you. Rest in peace, Philip Seymour Hoffman. This world was too cruel for you. Rest in peace, Kurt Cobain. You were too sensitive for this world. I hate this in the frame. Let's go Dodgers. 
Let's go Dodgers. Let's go Dodgers. Thank you, Joaquin. Thank you to my favorite joker of them all. Don't be a two-faced, my friends. The binary is an illusion. Break it. This November 5th at the ballot box. Don't fucking vote. The only way to stop the war against Muslim communities in the Holy Land is to withhold power from the war criminals atop both parties in this ridiculously outdated and stupid electoral system. Me, like I said, I gotta get ready. I gotta get prepped to teach civics this week because Kamala doesn't seem to understand how the legislative process works. How do you make a law, Kamala? Do you picture Congress when 50% of the country is against you? Do you picture Congress is going to allow you to pass anything? No, I don't picture that, girlfriend. And like I said, I'm teaching civics this week. This, by the way, is very healthy for me. It's called reading. I'm reading you for filth, Kamala and Barack and Michelle. That's the unholy triumvirate. I'm playing the dozens. Right? I'm roasting y'all. Because that's what they taught me in Hollywood, my friends. We stars, we divested from this bullshit. I cannot wait for this fucking election to be over. Right? Only don't forget, Biden a couple weeks ago suggested there was going to be violence. Why did he suggest there was going to be violence? Again, I say, did people not watch House of Cards? Remember, I'm the kid who worked at Interview Magazine. I'm the kid who answered the phone. I'm the kid who fact-checked the articles. And then the kid who fact-checked the articles at New York Magazine. And then grew up to write the articles myself. So don't start with these articles of Confederation. Don't start with the fucking Constitution. Right? Because the Constitution is a polyface document too. It can be read however you want it to be read. And let me just close at 33. 33, as I said. This is a people shooting hat. I shoot people in this hat. A lot of people like to shoot other people, right? Somehow they don't understand that they can just do this online. It's called first-person shooter games. Can't we all just give the fucking IDF a great big fucking Christmas present this year? Pun fully intended. Can't we all just get them a fucking subscription or whatever the fuck you need to Grand Theft Auto and be done with it? Right? Why can't they play their stupid war games, their torture games? See my X scroll for the bullshit that's been happening across Palestine, but most especially in that open-air prison of Gaza, subject to a blockade the way Cuba has been subject to a blockade. Oh, yo, my friends, just you wait till I get to my Godfather Part 2 article. Talk about sexual healing. I am the erotic. We all are. Everything made up 
is made, my friends. Everything copied, well, who cares, right? I actually thought Kamala might have some original ideas to contribute. I actually took her seriously, right? That's the rub, right? I see things so clearly having kicked all my demons and all of my substances, because also I don't do alcohol, my friends. The alcohol will kill you. The alcohol is what makes you look old. The alcohol is what causes chronic illnesses. The alcohol contributes to, wait for it, premature death, right? Why is this country's priorities to speak about this country again in such a decontextualized way, right? How did people forget that they live in a globalized world? Have people not even read their Thomas Friedman? <laughs> I guess I'll just conclude with this. I'm reading from the Goldstein Report. I mean, what are you going to say? The United Nations isn't an authority? Right? What are you going to say? This is a full-on performance, my friends. What are you going to say? Right? This can go up forever because I want I want to know more about why exactly all these neocons are lining up. Again, this framing is not good. I want to know again why all these neocons are lining up. And embracing Kamala. I thought she was a Democrat. Why? As I keep scrolling this massive, massive 452 page document detailing all of the war crimes and violations of international law and human rights. And you know what? Let me just, oh, right. This is what I wanted to read. Because again, you'll forgive me if I put myself out here as the durational artist I am, as the person who doesn't give a fuck, as the person who is employed to teach human rights and literature at Gettysburg College and then was told that I was a threat to campus because I said the campus should be closed because of the coronavirus outbreak, which forced the quarantine of the entire student population that was coerced through uh, misinformation to return to campus for fear of financial ruin to the campus otherwise, on the one hand, and on the other hand, because it was an actively hostile environment for black and brown students. No surprise, right? I mean, it was the ghosts of the Gettysburg battle, the turning point in the Civil War. We are still living in the afterlives of that war, right? And that's where I want to end. See C. Facts investigated by the mission. Factual and legal findings. Let me make sure the palace is in the frame. The occupied Palestinian territory, the Gaza Strip. One, the blockade. 27, the mission focused chapter five rendered as a Roman numeral on the process of economic and political isolation imposed by Israel on the Gaza Strip, generally referred to as a blockade. The blockade comprises measures 
such as restrictions on the goods that can be imported into Gaza and the closure of border crossings for people, goods, and services, sometimes for days, including cuts in the provision of fuel and electricity. Gaza's economy is further severely affected by the reduction of the fishing zone open to Palestinian fishermen and the establishment of a buffer zone along the border between Gaza and Israel, which reduces the land available for agriculture and industry. In addition to creating an emergency situation, the blockade has significantly weakened the capacities of the population of the health, water, and other public sectors to respond to the emergency created by the military operations. That was set down in a document, a white paper, in 2009, 15 years ago. The mission went on to say that they hold the view, quote, that Israel continues to be duty bound under the Fourth Geneva Convention and to the full extent of the means available to it to ensure the supply of foodstuff, medical and hospital items and other goods to meet the humanitarian needs of the population of the Gaza Strip without qualification. Now, I'm going to end on this note. This is my message loud and clear as somebody who is fully engaged in uprooting the legacy of the Kennedy political dynasty in this country. And I recognize that that ridiculous idiot, RFK Jr., is at the Garden Day or supposedly was scheduled to be there. He's no Tony Hinchcliffe, okay? (laughs) Jesus fucking Christ. This is the problem with the argument that the leading figures in their vibe-based, joy-filled, cognitively dissonant, right? Thank you, Beyonce. Dissonant messaging. This is what they don't seem to understand. On the one hand, they're saying Trump is a strong man who, if elected to a second term, is going to be so emboldened that he's going to round up people, right? That he's going to destroy the guardrails on democracy, that he's a fascist, that all hell is going to break loose. Here's the problem with that message. That's the description of Bibi Netanyahu, who continues to prosecute this illegal war, this illegal occupation, this illegal and immoral and unethical settler colonial regime. To elude wait for it, justice, to elude accountability, and nobody is reporting on it in the mainstream media. So again, thank you, Jeff Bezos. Everybody wants to crucify billionaires, right? Jeff Bezos founded fucking Amazon, people. He made reading accessible to countless numbers of people. So the United States has been enabling the strongman government of Bibi Netanyahu for years now, but especially through this insane campaign widening by the week in the Holy Land and across the Middle East and West Asia. But as the United States continues to destroy in collusion with the state of Israel, all global norms against 
or meant to prevent against the global norms that were constructed painstakingly over decades to construct global norms to prevent exactly what has happened in Palestine, especially Gaza, but across the region over the last year and some change, while the U.S. government has been lying to us about what they've been doing there. I say again very slowly, there is nothing anymore globally to protect anybody from coming for us right here in fucking America, people. Q, Childish Gambinas, this is America, right? Some of us remember the racial reckoning in this country. It's been long over do as Biden fucking said the other day when he was fucking apologizing to native people for boarding schools. Wow. Right. The point that I've been trying to make is that when you eviscerate global norms against genocide identity-based violence, state-sponsored terrorism, um, violations endlessly of the rule of law, there's nothing to protect you from other organized groups of people from doing to the Palestinians what the Israelis have been doing to the Palestinians, for doing to us what people have been doing to the Palestinians, in other words. See how easily it is to get my words jumbled and yet I am being transparent on the spot. So how come I wake up and read an Axios today? Again, I say thank you, Mike Allen, that Kamala Harris continues to try to differentiate herself from Biden to the degree that she doesn't want him to campaign for her, and yet she continues to publicly say that she wouldn't do anything different from him. Make that make sense to me. Right. So when people talk about guardrails, let this be a 4848 tape. I do have to get on with it. When people talk about guardrails being shredded in this so-called country as if there's no other country on the planet, as if the United States doesn't have military bases all over the world, what I think about are all the global norms that have been shredded deliberately by the Union States of Israel over the last 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80 years, however long it's been since their deadly exchange. Because make no mistake, Israel is just a little USA. And the USA is just a big fucking Israeli. We're not so big anymore, and that's the problem, my friends. And that's why you see all this insanity in Washington. Let's just pull the plug on the swamp and drain it once and for all. And that's not me endorsing Trump. That's me just parroting his lines, right? Because Trump's a con man, but also Kamala is a con man. Right, that's the rub, I say again, right? Politics is a con game. <laughs> again, I wrote a dissertation on it. You can look at it. It's linked below right here in my YouTube page. Happy to ask any questions and subscribe to my Substack. I've been quite busy on the notes. <laughs> also picking up steam on X. It's all about the love, my friends. Tough love, tough love. Tough love, tough love, do better, do better. You wanna be in charge of this country? You gotta do better, that goes to everybody. Because guess what? 
all of us out here in La La Land, but I see we're doing just fine on our own, my friends. Right? We don't need the government at all. And by the way, there was a genocide in California. <laughs> it's called the California Genocide. You can Google it, my friends. Yeah. So we know what's up on the left coast, right? Just like Freddie Freeman knows what's up. Do you know what I mean, friends? Let's go Dodgers! Let's go back to Brooklyn, my friends. I'm a free man. Love to everybody. And H&M, maybe you can find that bag you lost. I'd really like to take it and move. 